So let's talk about with this current enthusiasm for artificial intelligence in the market, what the opportunity is and kind of what it tells us about where we are in this current moment in the market. Binky Chada is joining us now, Deutsche Bank Chief Equity and Global Strategist. Binky, thank you so much for being here. We were just talking about this current mania, if you will, in the markets for artificial intelligence. Now, I know you're super high level, right? You're not digging into the names, but when enthusiasms wave through the markets for various topics, whether it be AI right now, whether it be crypto in the past, or go back to the dot-com bubble, right? Um, how do you factor that into your um, strategy making, or do you sort of try to leave it out? So, you know, I mean, in terms of uh, my official job description, number one task is to make a forecast for the S&P 500, I would say. And so, you know, most of the companies that we're talking about are not really in there. Uh, but of course, you know, sort of big craze and manias, you know, they happen uh, sort of all the time. And uh, one question in terms of sort of a spillover of risk appetite in uh, either direction is, is really about, you know, uh, you know, what's basically going on. So it, 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 I would say, you know, some of the run up uh, uh, very, very recently that we've seen in uh, some of these stocks has to do with, uh, you know, the market getting well off the floors of basically the October lows. Um, and, and so, you know, appetite, you know, is clearly there. I mean, we've sort of maintained all through last year and last year's sell off that risk appetites, uh, you know, it, it, it pretty solid, pretty good. It was just uh, really on uh, the short side. And so that's all markets go down. So, so you know, markets up quite a lot basically since the October lows. And so it's sort of fertile ground to feed, uh, 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 you know, these things going further, basically. Binky, uh, these manias we're seeing in some of these speculative stocks, do you see that activity spreading to just more structured, cash-rich, household name companies in the S&P 500? Uh, no, I, I, I think that, you know, uh, I mean, our call has been basically, you know, through Q4 and Q1, look for the market to rally, but for the market to rally basically, you know, on a positioning squeeze and a positioning squeeze really on the systematic strategies, uh, which are, you know, some of them are very, very fast moving. And I would say, uh, the short version of the story is that uh, the biggest driver basically of their positioning is volatility. And volatility last year was very, very elevated. Volatility across asset classes tends to have a common driver. And I think most people would agree that the main driver of volatility last year was really rates volatility, or if you want to call it that, you know, volatility coming basically about monetary policy from the FOMC. Um, and, and so what you've seen, I mean, I think, uh, you know, it's a simple chart that you can draw basically is is, uh, take the S&P 500, use the S&P 500 equal weighted because we do have other things happening over the course of last year and this will reduce basically the weight of the mega cap growth in tech stocks. So take the S&P 500 equal weight and, and just overlay, uh, you know, a measure of uh, rates volatility like the move index. Uh, the, the overlay is pretty remarkable uh, and, and, you know, explains easily why the markets basically uh, rallied yesterday uh, because uh, 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 what we were hearing was, um, you know, there are bumps uh, uh, along the road, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, 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 no reason to really get overexcited here, which is a very, very different tune than uh, uh, we heard all of last year. And so, you know, if you look at uh, what equities did, it's exactly in line with uh, what uh, rates of volatility did, even though rates were higher, hmm. equities were higher because rates volatility was lower. Right. Uh, Binky, I hope my question here is somewhat simple. What's the best form of diligence that investors who are looking at some of the mania around themes like artificial intelligence, this the wave of technology, especially as companies come out in droves announcing that, hey, we're going to be integrating this into our operations on a daily basis. What's the best way that they can do their own diligence, especially when there is the absence of, in some cases, regulation around that technology? 
Yeah, it, it, it's uh, not easy as we have basically seen uh, with what's happened uh, in the crypto markets, uh, and 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 so, you know. I think that uh, uh, the most important diligence is perhaps, uh, you know, your own personal diligence where you've got to make sure that uh, you are allocating to, uh, you know, speculative investments in line basically with your risk appetite and your ability to withstand what happens. Uh, I think, you know, I mean, when these companies are early and their stocks are still, you know, cheap uh, in the interest of, you know, FOMO or not missing out, taking small bets is the way that it goes. And, and it's only time that will tell whether they work or not. Yeah. Uh, Pinky, finally, I want to turn to the Federal Reserve because we heard once again from Fed Chair Jay Powell yesterday, he stuck to a strip script from last week. And I mm -hmm. do wonder, given that he didn't push back against the rally that we saw in risk assets, are we actually seeing the market and the Fed come closer together? There had been this sort of gap in perception. Do you think that they're they're going to meet here? Uh, I, so, you know, I, 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 I think uh, Chair Powell has been very, very clear that uh, uh, he's not going to take on market expectations in rates because, you know, the markets may well be pricing in a, a, a different path and perhaps a faster disinflation. Uh, and, and, and that may or may not prove to be correct. Uh, so I think the important message, you know, after the payrolls on uh, Friday uh, is that, you know, there may be bumps along the road. I'm using his expression. Um, and, 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 you know, disinflation is a process rather than, uh, you know, a light on and off switch. Uh, and so it's going to take some time. Um, I would also, you know, take away that, uh, you know, he noted basically, I would put it a little bit differently, but he noted that, you know, the signs are clearly that we have a very strong uh, 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 labor market, but many measures basically of wage inflation, uh, you know, despite the labor market having turned out to be stronger than we thought um, it, 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 with the historical revisions, what you're seeing is you're still seeing, uh, I mean, we haven't changed the wage data yet. So uh, 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 wage inflation has been coming down despite the fact that the labor market turned out to be in retrospect, you know, a, a, a much tighter than we thought. So, you know, there's positive news there basically, but I would say the main message, you know, I mean, it's the same thing happened uh, the FOMC day where, you know, you saw basically a pretty good rally. Uh, it, again, I would emphasize it's really been about uh, the volatility of rates and, 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 and it is about the Fed changing the forward speed or announcing a potential change in the forward speed of uh, moving that really raised volatility. And the behavior of rates volatility in this rate hiking cycle is very, very unusual by historical standards. And there is actually only one other cycle, uh, which is 7374, which saw you know rates volatility rise along basically with rates. And it's not a coincidence in our view that that's the only other cycle which saw equities basically sell off. Mm. Um, so I think it's really about rates fall and, 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 you know, looking forward, you know, yes, rates fall has come down, but it's still very elevated. So it has plenty of room to, I would say, move down uh, and, 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 if and when that happens, basically, uh, uh, you know, you should see systematic strategy positioning uh, continue to move up. I'd say, you know, it's sort of halfway up. Uh, it's 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 up from uh, sort of the extreme underweights to what we would say, you know, is a moderate uh, underweight. Uh, if you think about basically, you know, a range, we are off the floor, but we are in the middle of the lower half of basically the range. So still has plenty of room to run. Right. Pinky, um, we'll see if it does <laughs> from here. Pinky Chada, great to catch up with you as always. Deutsche Bank Chief Equity Global Strategist. Appreciate your time this morning. Thank you.